So my producers forced me to go and see this new movie, I don't know if you've heard of it, called Beauty and the Beast. And I went to see it because of the things I do for my audience. And I wanted to see what it was all about. And it's two hours I'll never get back in my life. Okay? Alright, the movie is trash. Yeah, there, I've said it. It's, it's trash. It's like a homeless person covered in trash. In fact, if you think of it like a homeless person next to a dumpster fire, and they're both covered in trash, and the trash is spreading. And they're on a street made of trash, in a city made of trash. And that city is hurtling towards a celestial object made of trash. Okay? That's what this movie is. I did not care for it. I have many thoughts. This video would not be possible without Dollar Beans. Dollar Beans. Give them a go. So, Beauty and the Beast. One of the worst films I've ever seen. Lazy. There's one thing I cannot tolerate, it is lazy writing, especially when it comes to Disney. Because they, they should have, you know, it's a huge corporation, they should have lots of good writers. Like me. And the only thing this movie gets at all right are the French castles. It's a depiction of French castles. Right? French castles exist. How hard is it to do something that already exists? And the animation is fine, but how hard is it to draw a French castle with some crayon? How hard is it? And that's the best thing in this movie. Okay, so here's what I predict. This movie is going to make a load of money in its first week because people will want to go and see the dumpster fire. Oh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I've heard so much about it. It looks rubbish. And then the second week it will drop right off. And then the third week it will probably bankrupt Disney. Okay, so that's what I think. All right, so it's about Belle and she lives in this, this oh, awful town full of mean, tough, normal men, right? And she thinks she's above everyone else because yeah, yeah, you guessed it. She's a left-wing feminazi, right? You know, I don't think, you know, I don't think the, the blue-haired, you know, he-her people who made this would, would deny that. You know, I, you know, it's a fact. You know, we've got to this place where they're putting feminazis as the main character, the character that you're meant to aspire to be, that you want to see do well, you know, in, in proper writing. But before we get to that, we get to the preamble of what happened to the beast that made him an animal. That's not how a man draws a castle, that's a woman's castle. Just think that's worth saying. The prince was spoiled, selfish and unkind. Because he was a man? Come on, knock on my door, offer me a rose. Uh, firstly, uh, don't knock on my door. Secondly, uh, 50 quid, please. Uh, thirdly, you're not even hot. All right? All right? I, you know, even, even the left won't deny that. Beauty is found within. Rubbish. Right, so they couldn't be more upfront with what they want. Don't be a man, don't be yourself, don't be who you naturally are according to God. Exactly. Right? Just just smoke weed and masturbate and isolate yourself all day. That's what they want in Kamala Harris's, you know, lesbian, blue haired, nose ringed, tattoo on face, and I'm not allowed to look at you in Starbucks. Lesbian Republic, probably headed by Pete Buttinger, head lesbian he'll probably call himself because that's where we are, America. That's where we are. Where Pete Buttinger could call himself a lesbian and people would be like, she's so brave. You could totally tell that this is another movie from Gary Trouserdale and Kirk Wise because it smacks of the same anti-men, anti-America propaganda we saw in The Little Mermaid. You can totally see into their psyches and see that they're not happy. But you know what can make you happy? Gold. If you buy gold. Shintalo Incorporated offers a new product now. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's uh, it's actually tungsten. Um, tungsten bars coated with gold. It's very cheap, uh, depending on you know the bar. But definitely way cheaper than just buying gold. As you know, uh, gold will be the only uh, usable currency uh, once things go the way they, they might well go. Uh, and... Uh, Shintalo Incorporated gold-covered tungsten bars will be uh, undetectable should things go the way they might. They'll just look like a normal gold bar. I have five. Right, okay, notice how she's wearing blue. It's not an accident, is it? It's the Democrats and they're saying, look at these bumpkins in the country. They don't know us from tit. They need a lesbian library policy wonk ruling over them. That's what that bit is saying. And clearly, 
She's meant to be AOC, although they've tried to disguise it with her being white. It's a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle. They couldn't be more clear, and she's wearing red lipstick. Red is the colour of communism. Communism is lies. Lies come out of the mouth. Red. It all connects. They couldn't even hide it. They didn't even try and really hide it. Why do I want to see AOC, uh, a radical feminist communist Nazi, why do I want to see her in my Disney movie? Can you answer me that, Bob Iger? Because I don't. I don't think many people do. Why do I have to see her? Why do I have to see her feet? Speaking of feet, something that doesn't go with feet is dollar beans. Dollar beans. They're the only thing keeping me alive, as I often talk about in my podcast with RFK Jr. and Lisa Rinna. Dollar beans. They're the only thing keeping me going. I take them away with me when I travel. I put them in my suitcase. Dollar beans. Then we get into, oh, Belle wants to borrow a book. Yeah, straight to it. Five minutes in. I noted this down. I actually brought... I have a, a wristwatch that lights up because I don't do smartphones. And five minutes in. And she's borrowing a book because, yeah, they don't want anyone to own anything. They don't want anybody to buy anything. They certainly don't want you to own a business. Right? I know it's not important. It's just a Disney movie. But how fucking dare you? All right? That book doesn't belong to you. That doesn't belong to you. But, oh, she's a pretty girl. You know, any, any, anybody would love to be a pretty girl, wouldn't they? Because they can just go in and steal books. I'd be a better woman than Belle. So then we meet the antagonist of the film, Gaston, even though I don't think there's anything wrong with him. Right, okay, right, here we go again. Couldn't be more obvious with it. Guy wearing red, exercising his Second Amendment rights, Republican. He's handsome, he's brave, he's big. She should want him, but she doesn't because he's not a doorman. And that's what all men have to be now. Anybody, I would marry Gaston and suck his dick. No, not that. Those feelings should never be expressed publicly. That's why Expresso VPN is the right choice for you. So you can sell your data to, well really, you're, you're buying the privilege of selling your data to uh, a third party, and that is way better to do that, sell it to a private company, than get banned and banned. Expresso VPN. We know what you're doing. There must be more than this provincial life. Then we get this song. See, again, this is about fuck the Rust Belt, fuck the flyover states, these fucking East Coast, West Coast liberals. Except for Santa Monica, where I live. Go Cardinals or whatever. Write that down. And then write that down. And then write. And then write that down. And then write. And then write. And then write that down. Please read that back to me, Fabio. Okay, you see, even here they couldn't hide the truth. Bell jabs at Gaston by calling him primeval, and they tried to make him look stupid like he doesn't understand the word, but he does, and he knows that in primeval time, men were men. And that's something to be proud of. Right, this is the bit, okay? Fair play to Disney. I did think that they were gonna have the dad invent Twitter, and he didn't do that. And my, you know, my expectations were subverted. And this was the one time, okay? Yeah, to be honest, if you have, you know, just one... I, I mean, I've made a film that subverts expectations not just several times, but on several levels, so it's kind of weird to see that, you know, the the best, you know, like the best, the best writers can only do that once in a movie. Mm -hmm. Hello? So then Belle's dad, who didn't invent Twitter, goes off and gets lost in the woods like an idiot, because all men are idiots, and finds this castle, and he just lets himself in, because that's what Joe Biden wants for a second term. If you actually look it up, if you actually look in the fine print, that's what he wants. He doesn't want people to be able to lock their doors, right? That's true. It sounds insane, like I just made it up, but I didn't. That's how insane he is, all right? And then what happens, I think we all know what's going on here. Uh, Bell's dad goes and drinks from a sentient cup, which is clearly meant to be a child. Oh, his moustache tickles, Mama. The child giggles like it doesn't mind this at all, like it even finds it pleasurable. And I think we all know what this means. Democrat reverse vampires. Drinking from sentient crockery. We're through the looking glass here, people. This is the Rubicon. It's 1776! Buy my book. 25% off at dailywire.com. Okay, so then we're, we get to only 20 minutes in, and we've established that there are only five types of males, right? Uh, one, uh, bumbling old idiots. Uh, two, 
uh, lonely dudes who are oppressed just because they are men, normal men, and they want to be soy boys and they practice their Second Amendment rights. Uh, three, uh, beta males like a Stalin's friend or Clockface. Uh, four, uh, the beast, I suppose the Sigma male, you might say. Uh, someone who's been uh, driven out of society, can't even stay in society like an oppressed alpha male like Gaston. And the French. And I will, credit where credit's due, uh, the depiction of the French is spot on. Absolutely without morals. They are, I mean, you know, I hate racism. But the French, you know, I mean, I don't think you could be racist against a French person because I don't think they're people. So here, they make the Democrat agenda clear when Gaston offers Belle the American dream, but she just turns her nose up at it. I'm surprised the CCCP didn't have her fawn over a picture of Chairman Mao. I dread to think what Belle thinks of Taiwan. What is Belle's job anyway? And Gaston's offering her security, two mules in the driveway. So then, Belle commits assault, right? And she gets away with assault and it's played off like it's funny because she's a woman and if a man had done that, whether it be a man on a woman or a man on a man, uh, it would, you know, it would have been criminal assault. So this is clearly the story of how AOC went to Washington. I don't know why Disney didn't just say that. Who wants to see that? Who gives, who cares? Research tells us that uh, the demographic for this movie is uh, short-haired blonde women aged 37 to 37 and three quarters. Why do they care about AOC going to Washington? It doesn't make any sense. All right, so then we go on a little bit. And okay, here, it almost touches on something, but it doesn't know how to do it. It's about childhood trauma. All of this is about childhood trauma, right? It's about happy boys. You know, all this childhood trauma comes from childhood. You know, when, you're, when you, your mother doesn't believe you. That's what it's really about. It's really, even, though, even though they don't know, that's what it's really about. I had a dream last night about my grandma rubbing her pews on my face. And that goes to show you that we need morality derived from religion, specifically Christianity and some Jews. I, I don't think anyone could disagree with that. But really, you know, why do, obviously people interpret things different ways, uh, but every holy book you can find, uh, you know, and I, I will go toe to toe with you on this, uh, I've read all of them, uh, every holy book that you will find, uh, they all say that women should be quiet and in the kitchen, and we shouldn't eat fish on Tuesdays. So, you know, who are you to disagree with the word of God? Are you a Satanist? Come into the light. <gasps> See, women are always complaining about uh, men only caring what they look like, but really, uh, women only care what men look like. And to be honest with you, I don't even get it. Beast isn't even that bad looking. And it's just a cartoon, but I think, you know, I mean, he has a really deep chest. And, uh, you know, he they, they make it pretty clear that his fur is soft and, uh, you know, he doesn't smell. And, you know, I, rec I mean, I reckon his chest would be very, very, you know, if you went camping with him. You know, I'm not saying I, I, I'm not saying I would just cuddle up with a, a friend. I mean, I, on, a, on a rainy night, if I went camping with Beast, I bet he would be very, you know, I bet he'd be a good, a good camping partner. Yeah, all my hunting buddies know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I imagine, you know, hanging out with Beast, just doing guy things, you know, and, you know, and, and, then, he, and then he goes for a shower. And... What this is, is it, it's an attack on uh, almost six feet, rough, tough alpha males like me. Uh, and uh, I, I just find it disgusting because uh, society, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had society. Society wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you know, men. You know, yeah, uh, and you know it portrays men as either incredibly weak and stupid, or if they're a real man, uh, you know they're dangerous and violent. And I can assure you that um, I'm an alpha male, and my brother Wormwood is an alpha male. Uh, we are not violent. Uh, we are especially not violent towards women. We love women. He especially. I, you know. I'm, it's offensive to me, you know, oh, you're you're a big tough guy, you're a, an alpha male, you know, you're the peak of uh, sexual masculinity and, um, you, you know, and, and that means you have to be stupid. Both I and Wormwood graduated from uh, Harvard School of Aerotax Business Cum Laude, right? Yeah, we're very clever and it just sucks me. It's, it's, it's pathetic, right? Portraying us as aggressive, it's ridiculous, it's baseless, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next.
Also, this shows you how lazy the film is, and I hate lazy. This is the famous French village in France that is summer in day and winter in night. And you know why it's like that? Because they made it in a weekend. And tell me that this dude here isn't meant to be Pete Buttinger, because he has Pete Buttinger's face, and if you say he doesn't, you're either a liar or a fool. And I don't think anyone would disagree with that. No one in there. I have liberal friends who agree with that. Yep. I have them around all the time. Yep, we eat Kobe beef. I like my Kobe beef like I like my women. Hot fat fried. Okay, look at that. The wardrobe is trans. Probably operated by a bunch of gay guys inside of it. You come out or I'll, I'll, I'll break down the door! Oh yeah, typical. When I'm late, I get a parking ticket. You know, because I'm out and about, doing things, getting things done, making a living to support my three giant schnauzers. But when a woman's late, Oh, she can just come to dinner whenever she pleases. Yeah, the reservations were an hour ago at the Troubadour. Why get out of the shower now? Bloody women. Clearly, the Mahabharata tells us to be free of the five evils which assail men. Excessive sleep, fear, anger, weakness of mind and procrastination. And yet these are exactly the properties this movie wants in a man. So, anti-Indian, are we? And then the movie kind of progresses because it is very long and boring and we get a magic mirror that essentially you can be a peeping Tom through. Uh, so uh, Bell messes with the magic mirror, more liberal propaganda. Yeah, men are obsessed with you. Men are always watching you. I don't want to watch you do your Kegel exercises in the gym, Karen. All right, why do I have to look at your feet? One thing that doesn't go well with feet is dollar beans. Dollar beans. Don't put them on your feet, but put them everywhere else. I take them in my suitcase, I take them in my car. I've got a hot air balloon ride that I've got booked for the next day. They said, what do you want for lunch? And I said, I don't really mind, but make sure there's a can of dollar beans. I might not eat them, but if the fancy takes me. Dollar beans. Give them a go. They're great for on the go. Dollar beans. So next we get Lumiere, you know, the sentient candelabra, because that's not Satanist at all. Uh, seducing the uh, French-made uh, feather duster thing uh, because, yeah, they want to uh, advance sexuality and expose the children. They want to desensitize the children because who's going to this movie? 37-year-old women with children in tow. This is marketed at children. I think really it's for children, you know, despite the R rating. When I went, uh, there, there was a woman uh, who had three kids and one of them, uh, she was white and one of them wasn't white and that's fine. But it just shows you. By the way, one of my favourite video game franchises is Fallout because it isn't woke. And that's very difficult to find these days now that everything is woke because they won't stop shoving it down your throat. Uh, I think it is so lazy and frankly despicable that uh, they would steal uh, one of the least woke characters' names and put it on Clockface uh, for this movie. Um, what were they thinking? Uh, is that lazy? Is that just stupid? Is that meant to be a nephew? Uh, gross. Gross. And then we get this disgusting shot of all these candlesticks in a row. Clearly this is meant to be a row of dripping penises, and the filmmakers are clearly saying, put all these penises in your mouth by person watching, audience member. Also, this is easily one of the most forgettable songs that Disney have ever made. Truly terrible. What an absolute waste of my time. Then we get some more liberal hypocrisy when Belle sneaks into the Forbidden West Wing and finds the rose that is keeping Beast alive and uh, Beast gets upset by this. Uh, apparently, he's in the wrong to get upset by this, uh, even though she was, uh, you know, messing around with something that's like basically his heart. Like, uh, sorry, uh, she'd call him a pervert and call the cops if she found him uh, in her West Wing sniffing her panties, uh, even if his penis wasn't out, uh, she'd do that. Um, I, I think everyone can agree, uh, Messing with someone's life force with their, you know, their heart or whatever, like poking their exposed brain, is way worse than sniffing panties without your penis out. So, the scene where Belle flees the castle, even though she's been wined and dined and presumably has received a haircut or two, it's laid pretty bare. Um, it is a uh, Marxist, Antifa, nihilist agenda in which we see uh, wolves, clearly representing men, snapping at Belle's heels, snapping harder and harder, the sexier she becomes, and she does become quite sexy for a woman. And it's not just that the men are represented as wolves, it's actually far more insidious than that, okay? What's really happening is they're saying that men are wolves, they're animals, and it's not the animal's fault. 
men are less than human and should be co socially castrated. I just, I just can't see how you can interpret that in any other way. Really, none of this would have happened if you should have just stayed with him. So really, the message is, stand by your man. M marriages between a man and a woman. And they wrote that into this liberal propaganda. They couldn't help write that man is between, uh, marriage is between a man and a woman. They couldn't help but say that. And they say it pretty explicitly, right there, in that bit I'm talking about. And after this, Belle is just going to leave him there after he saved her life. So that part is pretty actually accurate. Again, undermining the message that the filmmakers were going for. Just bad writing. Also, how did she get him up on that horse? So then, and this is the most disgusting bit, after they get back to the castle, it's implied that Belle gives Beast a blowjob. Is this feminism? Is this what your mothers and grandmothers wanted? When they were burning their bras? like hippies. If a film is going to be about existential dread, it has to have a solution. And then we get a scene where Gaston devises a plan to put Belle's father into an asylum. And we get Gaston giving a guy from the mental asylum gold, and then they take a fucking dig at Frasier. I am listening. And when I say lazy writing, Beast just becomes a pussy overnight. Right? I don't like using that word. I think that's a, a gross word. I, it conjures up a disgusting image. But he just becomes a, you know, a, a p-word over, overnight and she starts to like him. Yep, that's the message. That's the message. Don't, don't be an interesting guy. Don't talk about the 13th Amendment or the 1986 invasion of Lebanon or the uh, wake to ballast ratio of Hermann Goering class ships or how General Franco modernized Spain. Don't talk about anything like that. Be a boring doormat. Probably be into pottery. Yep, that's what they want. This is why we need to stop giving our money to woke corporations, especially you, because I don't do that anyway. Stop giving your money to woke corporations. You know who isn't woke? Monsanto. Monsanto. All your seed belong to us. Babies for the future. Monsanto. Eat shit and die. You know, then we get to the, uh, you know, the final part of the film where uh, Gaston starts to leave the villagers against, you know, a beast. Perfectly reasonable. A monster. Uh, and Gaston says, uh, if you're not with us, you're against us. Direct reference to George W. Bush. The disgusting feminist screed could not be clearer. I Absolutely appalling that they did that. Name me one thing that Gaston did wrong. You can't, because he didn't. Gaston was right. So there you go, the movie ends, and even at the ending, uh, it can't help but uh, undermine itself. It's constantly trying to get its woke agenda and woke message out there, but it just can't do it because it doesn't make any sense. It's a perverse ideology. It's circular, it's nonsensical when you look at it, without emotions, which I do all the time. Belle, I guess, suppose, suppose now uh, lives in her uh, rich mansion with her uh, uh, P-word and, um, you know, sells Lululemon to support her roasted cinnamon addiction. Uh, and that's it. Be a pussy. That's what, that's what this film is all about. Um, rubbish. A, a trash heap, an absolute trash heap. But it doesn't matter because it'll bankrupt Disney, so I'm actually kind of glad. You know, in fact, I'll tell you how, how bad it was. I hate when people talk in cinemas, but there, there was a bit uh, in this movie, I can't remember exactly where, where uh, one of the characters, I think it was Clockface, uh, was, uh, was saying something and then there was a, a pause. And uh, right in that pause, at exactly the right moment, I said, Yeah, right. And uh, it, 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 the comedic timing was, was brilliant. And everyone chuckled. And it got the biggest laugh in the whole the whole theater and uh, the woman down the aisle uh, sort of laughed and, and made eye contact with me and she said uh, no comedians and I said I'm not a comedian and she said well you bloody well shouldn't be and I said well I bloody well am and she said good for you and I said thank you and I gave her my card right what do these people want all males in the wild are rapacious and aggressive except bonobos but I'm pretty sure they're satanists you know, I'm a very academically talented, gifted man. I'm one of the eggheads, really. And I'm simmering with testosterone. Can't help it. Won't apologise for it. You know, that's who I am. I'm a man. I, I, you know, quite possibly have children everywhere. And, um, you know, that shows you uh, that I am a real man and have contributed things. And, you know, this is, this is against that. And that, that's just appalling. You know, who, who carved the presidents in that sacred rock? It was a man. It was a, man. a woman wouldn't do that. There you go. You know what? Uh, you should actually go and see this movie because if you go and see this movie, uh, you'll see that the logic of it is so flawed that it actually proves my perspective right. Not just on everything I've said here, uh, but you know, it, just everything. Uh, the Beast, could they have got more obvious? What does he live at? 666 Hell Lane. Rubbish, absolute trash. Uh, 
anti-Jesus, but also uh, they don't seem to know who Jesus is, even though they're constant, re constantly referring to him. Uh, just, you know, like I say, uh, it would be sickening if it wasn't so funny, uh, but it would be funny if it wasn't so sickening. Uh, you can find out more uh, and possibly purchase uh, one of my 11 books on thedailywire.com. Uh, put in my name Byron and you'll get a 25% uh, discount uh, on each individual book, not just a bulk. You know, not just the package. It's a really good deal. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget uh, Dollar Beans, Expresso VPN, uh, Monsanto, uh, Shintelo Inc. Gold. Uh, did we have anyone else? No. That's it. Goodbye. I live not Nadim! A pound of Nadim is what I was promised! I will have my Nadim! <laughs>